everyone. Welcome back to Winnie the Pooh. Um, I've decided today, chapter 8 is called In Which Christopher Robin Leads an Exposition to the North Pole. An exposition is a big trip in search of something. So he's going in search of the North Pole. This is a very long chapter, so I'm going to read this in two parts. I'll read the first half today and the next half tomorrow. Okay, so here we go. Get all settled. I'm going to open up those ears and imaginations, get comfy, and write the first few pages are just words, so you're not going to really see much, but I'll show you the pictures once they come up. All right. One fine day, Pooh had stumped up to the top of the forest to see his friend Christopher Robin, to see if his friend Christopher Robin was interested in bears at all. At breakfast that morning, a simple meal of marmalade spread lightly over a honeycomb or two, he had suddenly thought of a new song. It began like this. Sing ho for the life of a bear. When he had got as far as this, he stretched his head and thought to himself, that's a very good start for a song, but what about the second line? He tried singing ho two or three times, but it didn't seem to help. Perhaps it would be better, he thought, if I sang hi for the life of a bear. So he sang it, but it wasn't. Very well, then he said, I shall sing that first line twice. And perhaps if I sing it very quickly, I shall find myself singing the third and fourth lines before I have time to think of them, and that will be a good song. Now then, sing ho for the life of a bear, sing ho for the life of a bear. I don't much mind if it rains or snows, because I've got a lot of honey on my nice new nose. I don't much care if it snows or thaws, because I've got a lot of honey on my nice clean paws. Sing ho for a bear, sing ho for a poo, and I'll have a little something in an hour or two. He was so pleased with this song that he sang it all the way to the top of the forest. And if I go on singing it much longer, he thought, it would be time for the little something. And then that last line won't be true. So he turned it into a hum instead. Christopher Robin was sitting outside his door, putting on his big boots. As soon as he saw the big boots, Pooh knew that an adventure was going to happen. And he brushed the honey off his nose with the back of his paw and spruced himself up as well as he could so as to look ready for anything. Good morning, Christopher Robin, he called out. Hello, Pooh. I can't get this boot on. That's bad, said Pooh. Do you think you could very kindly lean against me? Because I keep pulling so hard that I fall over backwards. Pooh sat down, dug his feet into the ground, and pushed hard against Christopher Robin's back. And Christopher Robin pushed hard against his, and pulled and pulled at his boot until he had got it on. And that's that, said Pooh. What do we do next? We're all going on an expedition said Christopher Robin, as he got up and brushed himself off. Thank you, Pooh. Going on an expedition? said Pooh eagerly. I don't think I've ever been on one of those. Where are we going to, to on this expedition? Expedition, silly old bear. It's got an X in it. Oh, said Pooh. I know, but he didn't really. We're going to discover the North Pole. Oh, said Pooh again. What is the North Pole? he asked. It's just a thing you discover, said Christopher Robin, carelessly, not being quite sure himself. Oh, I see, said Pooh. Are bears any good at discovering it? Of course they are. And Rabbit and Kanga and all of you. It's an expedition. That's what expedition means. A long line of everybody. You'd better tell the others to get ready while I see if my gun's all right. And we must all bring provisions. Bring what? Things to eat. Oh, said Pooh happily. I thought you said provisions. I'll go and tell them. And he stumped off. The first person he met was Rabbit. Hello, Rabbit, he said. Is that you? Let's pretend it isn't, said Rabbit, and see what happens. I've got a message for you. I'll give it to him. We're all going on an expedition with Christopher Robin. What is it when we're on it? A sort of boat, I think, said Pooh. Oh, that sort. Yes, and we're going to discover a pole or something, or was it a mole? Anyhow, we're going to discover it. We are, are we? said Rabbit. Yes, and we've got to bring po things to eat with us in case we want to eat them. Now, I'm going down to Piglet's. Tell Kanga, will you? He left Rabbit and hurried down to Piglet's house. The Piglet was standing on the ground at the door of his house, blowing happily at a dandelion and wondering whether it would be this year, next year, sometime, or never. He had just discovered that it wouldn't be never and was trying to remember what it was and hoping it wasn't anything nice when Pooh came up. Oh, Piglet, said Pooh excitedly, we're going on an expedition, all of us with things to eat, to discover something. To discover what, said Piglet anxiously. Oh, just something. 
nothing fierce. Christopher Robin didn't say anything about fierce. He just said it had an X. It isn't their necks I mind, said Pinklet earnestly. It's their teeth. But if Christopher Robin is coming, I don't mind anything. In a little while, they were all ready at the top of the forest, and the expotition had started. First came Christopher Robin and Rabbit, then Piglet and Pooh, then Kanga with Roo in her pocket, an owl, then Eeyore, and at the end, in a long line, all Rabbit's friends and relations. I didn't ask them, explained Rabbit carelessly. They just came. They always do. They can march at the end after Eeyore. What I say, said Eeyore, is that it's unsettling. I didn't want to come on this expo, what Pooh said. I only came to oblige, but here I am. And if I am the end of the expo, what we're talking about, then let me be the end. But if every time I want to sit down for a little rest, I have to brush away half a dozen of Rabbit's smaller friends and relations first, then this isn't an expo, whatever it is at all. It's simply a confused noise. That's what I say. I see what Eeyore means, said Owl. If you ask me, I'm not asking anybody, said Eeyore. I'm just telling everybody. We can look for the North Pole or we can play. Here we go gathering nuts in May with the end part of, of an ant's nest. It's all the same to me. There was a shout from the top of the line. Come on, called Christopher Robin. Come on, called Pooh and Piglet. Come on, called Owl. We're starting, said Rabbit. I must go. And he hurried off to the front of the expedition with Christopher Robin. All right, said Eeyore, we're, we're going, only don't blame me. So off they all went to discover the pole, and as they walked, they chattered to each other of this and that, all except Pooh, who was making up a song. This is the first verse, he said to Piglet when he was ready with it. First verse of what? My song. What song? This one. Which one? Well, if you listen, Piglet, you'll hear it. How do you know I'm not listening? So there's the line of all the people going on the expedition. Our animals. Pooh couldn't answer that one, so he began to sing. They all went off to discover the pole, owl and piglet and rabbit and all. It's a thing you discover, as I've been told, by owl and piglet and rabbit and all. Eeyore, Christopher Robin and Pooh, and rabbit's relations all went too. And where the pole was, none of them knew, sang hey for the owl and rabbit and all. Hush, said Christopher Robin, turning round to Pooh. We're just coming to a dangerous place. Hush, said Pooh, turning round quickly to piglet. Hush, said Piglet to Kanga. Hush, said Kanga to Owl, while Roo said hush several times to himself, very quietly. Hush, said Owl to every Eeyore. Hush, said Eeyore in a terrible voice to all Rabbit's friends and relations. And hush, they said hastily to each other, all down the line, until it got to the last one of them. And the last and smallest friend and relation was so upset to find that the whole expedition was saying hush to him, that he bore it, buried himself, head downwards, in a crack in the ground. And stayed there for two days, and stayed there for two days until the danger was over, and then went home in a great hurry and lived quietly with his aunt ever afterwards. His name was Alexander Beetle. They had come to a stream which twisted and tumbled between high rocky banks, and Christopher Robin saw at once how dangerous it was. It's just the place, he explained, for an ambush. What sort of bush? whispered Pooh to Piglet. A gorse bush? My dear Pooh, said Owl in his superior way, don't you know what an ambush is? Owl, said Piglet, looking round at him severely. Pooh's whisper was a perfectly private whisper, and there was no need. An ambush, said Owl, is a sort of surprise. So is a gorse bush sometimes, said Pooh. An ambush, as I was about to explain to Pooh, said Piglet, is a sort of surprise. If people jump out at you suddenly, that's an ambush, said Owl. It's an ambush, Pooh, when people jump to you suddenly, explained Piglet. Pooh, who now knew what an ambush was, said that a gorse bush had sprung at him suddenly one day when he fell off a tree, and he had taken six days to get all the prickles out of himself. We're not talking about gorse bushes, said Owl a little crossly. I am, said Pooh. They were climbing very cautiously up the stream now, going from rock to rock, and after they had gone a little way, they came to a place where there, the banks widened out at each side, so that on each side of the water there was a level strip of grass on which they could sit down and rest. As soon as he saw this, Christopher Robin called, Halt! And they all sat down and rested. I think, said Christopher Robin, that we ought to eat all our provisions now so that we shan't have so much to carry. All right. I'm going to stop reading there, and we'll finish the rest of the chapter tomorrow. All right, friends, have a great day. Bye-bye.